Um, part of the way that they pay for this park is through people buying bricks. They were selling bricks at about $35 a pop. And you can get a message inscribed on those bricks. You'll get two lines, 15 characters. So you walk through there, you might see some of the red bricks right in there. You walk through there, you might see somebody's name or a little message that they left. So one of those particular things. So this is also home to the cultural remembrance because unfortunately there was a bombing that took place during the Olympics. And it was by the Unabomber, Eric Rudolph. And they thought that it was a gentleman by the name of Richard Jewell. Nope, it was Eric Rudolph. Eric Rudolph is with the authorities now, fortunately. But they have a fountain in there that shoots out about 5,000 gallons of water per cycle. I will point that out to you when we get to it. Also, they have any number of festivities or concerts or activities at this particular park. One concert series that I went to back in the day was called Party in the Park. And that's where I saw Maroon 5 perform for free. That was back when they were doing their first album. Uh, I don't know what goes on here now because I was going to Georgia State University, so this park was kind of close to there, but I'm one of the cool kids. I don't hang out at this park. <laughs> and so just know that. But they do have other events and festivities at this park. It's a beautiful park, though. We've been around most of it. Nice. I, I thought uh, Ted uh, T Z T Jensky, or whatever his last name is, was the Unabomber. No, so what I know is Eric Rudolph. So okay. that's the fountain right there that shoots out 5,000 gallons of water per second. And they thought it was a security guard named Richard Jewell, but no, it was Eric Rudolph. Over on the left hand side, we got Skyview Ferris Wheel. You got 42 climate control gondolas, gives you a panoramic view of the city. So the idea for this originated where? In London. I'm sure of you course, know. Of course, we've been on that one. So. It's gone now, though. Oh, really? Yeah, they awesome. took it down last year. Yeah, it's well, that's I'm pretty freaking sure sad. Anyways, um, so that's where the idea came from. They decided to shop that around the U.S. and now we have a 30-year lease with them. And it costs about $16 and up for you to ride that thing. I got to ride it for free. I will tell you this, it only goes around twice in a circle and it doesn't get that high. So you spend that money if you want to. Left-hand side right here, we got Margaritaville. What famous musician wrote the song Margaritaville and started the restaurant of the same name? idea. Jimmy Buffett? Oh, Jimmy Buffett. There you go. Yeah. That's actually our hotel. <laughs> passed away last year. And now we're about to make our way over to the CNN, the former CNN headquarters. He also wrote Cheeseburger in Paradise. Yeah. Margaritaville is the one though. Which they also have Cheeseburger in Paradise restaurant chains too, I think. But CNN is the first 24 hour news network started in 1980 by what big time media mogul? I think it was 1981. I remember 1991, they kept on saying this is CNN yeah. on a tenth year, year repeatedly. Yeah. yeah, but that's that's another question. But who was the guy that helped start CNN? The that's big Atlanta. Well, he's not from Atlanta, but. He has a lot of networks and stuff, media mobile, anybody. Ted Turner. There we go, that's a answer I'm looking for. Now the other thing that you said, you used to say the slogan, what famous black actor did that slogan and say you are now watching CNN? Oh, the announcer, that I don't know. Did the voice of Darth Vader. Oh, yes. Famous black actor. My last name is Mr. Jones, Earl Jones. Yes, James Earl Jones, correct. James so. Earl Jones. Well, this now so there's a lot of stuff that always happens. So this is the old CNN headquarters right here. So there used to be uh, big CNN letters right there on the ledge, but they removed them earlier this year. So the main headquarters moved to Midtown. And they moved like maybe a few years back. They've only recently removed those letters as a few, a couple of months ago. And it used to be painted on that back wall uh, inside the building, that white wall that used to have CNN letters. And so now they're revamping this particular area because they used to give tours here. They had a, um, what you call it, a food court here. They still have that food court here. But 
they are revamping this not really sure what it's going to be some say a multi-purpose area some say like hotel rooms or something like that it remains to be seen but it doesn't really sound too exciting so i hope it's not because uh a fox is beating their ass off yeah well i just hope that they do something more fun with this particular building and not just more it's gonna in the way, so. more a hotel or whatever <laughs> Coming up on State Farm Arena. State Farm Arena will be on the right hand side. It was formerly known as Phillips Arena. Uh, this is home to the Atlanta Hawks and our other basketball team, the WNBA's Atlanta Dream. Right there on the right hand side, coming up is a statue of Dominique Wilkins, very famous basketball player for the Atlanta Hawks back in the day. And they also have any number of concerts here. I saw Coldplay perform here one year. Janet Jackson and Dave Chappelle both performed here last year. Our very own Usher is going to be here later on this year. And there's more concerts than that. Those are just the ones that I can think of off the top of my head. Now coming up, you might see it on the right hand side. That's Mercedes Benz Stadium. So this is home to the Atlanta Hawks. I mean, the Atlanta Falcons, as well as our championship soccer team, the Atlanta United. Over to the right-hand side, you got the Georgia World Congress Center building over there, so they have any number of conventions over that way. So it's like any reason to have a party, any reason to have a convention. So far this year, we've had a hair convention, a coverings convention, a chicken convention, a volleyball convention, and a cheerleading convention so far that I know of. It costs roughly $1.6 billion for them to construct Mercedes-Benz Stadium. The top of it opens up like a sun. Right here to the right, we have the world's largest steel falcon because why else would any other city need a big, large steel falcon? <laughs> and also, you see that it is not naked, it is wearing a scarf. So whenever it is wearing a scarf, that usually alerts you that there's a home game happening. And it will wear that particular team's name, whether it be the Falcons or the Atlanta United. That's how you know that there's a home game or maybe a special event, which right now they have a pride uh, scarf on it. I don't know if they're going to have any of the pride activities here or they're just celebrating, you know, showing their support of pride. So, but we are slated to get the World Cup in 2026. So come back here for that. Also, if you ever go to this stadium, be sure to check out the concession stand because the food is really good at inexpensive prices and you're not going to find that at any other stadium or arena. And also they have their own share of concerts here. Late last year, Beyonce performed here and during the summertime, Taylor Swift was here. And the same weekend that Taylor Swift was here, Janet Jackson was performing right next door. So it's very congested. Now, the particular area that we're in right now is known as the Gulch, G-U-L-C-H. Atlanta used to be known as a railroad hub. In the 1920s, they constructed viaducts to give us the upper street level, which is what we're on right now. They did that to give a better flow of traffic for the railroad that was underneath. But they never really developed this area. So all that construction that you see over there to the left-hand side, it's them developing this area and they're going to rename this area Centennial Yards. So it's scheduled about four or five years out from now. That's when they think that, that they'll be completed. So that's going to consist of any number of shops, restaurants, bars, maybe housing, maybe parking, but things to bring people over to the area. So if you're going to a game at the Mercedes-Benz Stadium or at Phillips Arena or wherever, it's like, don't leave, we have activities and stuff for you to do over here as well. So stick around. And depending on how well this particular area uh, performs, then they'll revitalize another area called Underground Atlanta. So look down underneath on the right hand and on the left hand side, you see all the nothing, nothingness that's there. You see just train tracks, parking space, and a bunch of undeveloped areas. So they're looking to develop all of this. 
And like I said, they'll rename it Centennial Yard. So we'll see what that looks like. So come back and visit us in about four or five years. And if this uh, road is still like it is, they ought to rename it Pothole Road. Yeah. And then I want you to look to the left. You got State Farm Arena. And right underneath it are some big steel beam letters that spell out what? Atlanta. There you go. And if it was nighttime, it'll be lit up and it'll look really pretty. And you can really see the see the Atlanta that's right there. But yeah. oh, let me know when you got the photo. Yeah, thank you. Okay. But this is not State Farm World Headquarters, is it? I thought it was located in Illinois. Yeah, this is this isn't State Farm World Headquarters at all. But maybe that's just where they hold their stockholders. Maybe. But Atlanta is not the original name of the city. The original name of the city is Terminus. In 1835, Atlanta was known as Terminus because she had the West and Pacific Railroad lines that were looking for an ending point for their railroad. They found a spot, put a stake in the ground, said this is our terminus. Terminus literally means end of the line. So in 1835, Atlanta was known as Terminus. In 1837, a gentleman by the name of John Thrasher moved here. He built a convenience store and a few homes and they renamed the area Thrasherville. That might be where we got the name for our now defunct ice hockey team, the Atlanta Thrashers. And then in 1842, Governor Lumpkin came into power. Locals want to rename it after him. They wanted to call it Lumpkin, Lumpkinville. But he said, no, let's rename it after my daughter, Martha. Let's call it Marthasville. And then the chief engineer of the railroad said, I have a better idea. Let's call it Atlantica Pacifica. By 1843, they all decided to shorten the name down to what? Atlanta. Atlanta. Now, did anybody watch The Walking Dead? Okay, then we'll skip that portion of the trivia. <laughs> we'll move on to uh, Ted Turner because we're going to the Ted Turner building now or we're going to go buy it. But I want y'all to tell me everything that y'all know about Ted Turner. Franchises that he owned, stuff, whatever he owned, networks that he owned, who he went out with, whatever you know. Go. Uh, CNN. Yes. Uh, what's that? A movie channel. Uh, WTBS. Yes. Owns one of the sports teams around here. Yes. And his girlfriend is it still uh, Jane Fonda. They divorced, but yes, that was somebody he went out with. So yes, yes to that. So yeah, anywhere from <laughs> CNN, TBS, TMC, Turner Movie Classics, TNT, Cartoon Network, Adult Swim. Um, Used to own the Braves and own the stadium that they played in, which was Turner Field Stadium that now belongs to Georgia State University. Yes, he went out with Jane Fonda. They are divorced. He also owned the Wrestling Federation, WCW World, World Championship Wrestling. So those are just some of the things that I know. He's from Texas. Also, he has a real estate out there in Montana. Out there in Montana, he has a ranch. They have bison out there on that ranch. And so he started a restaurant chain called Tez Montana Grill, and they're known for their bison burgers. So attached to this building that we're gonna see is Tez Montana Grill. And so if you're looking for something to eat later on today, maybe you wanna go there and get you a nice bison burger. I haven't had one myself. Also, um, he helped to start the cartoon Captain Planet back in the day, early 90s. I hear he might be an environmentalist. And he's still alive. How old is he now? Uh, late 80s from what I hear. Up inside that red brick building is a tabernacle formerly known as the House of Blues. So that's a concert for you, but right straight ahead on the left hand side, that beige building is the Ted Turner building. The top of it is where his penthouse suite is at. Down below on the first level, we got Ted's Montana Grill right there. Also, the Captain Planet Society is right there because, like I said, he helped to start that cartoon. Now, Atlanta has a tax incentive, or at least I should say Georgia has a tax incentive which brought the film industry here. So they're filming any number of things here at any given day, any given time. So one of the things that uh, 
some of the things that they filmed here is some of Atlanta's homegrown stuff, like the TV show Stranger Things, the TV show Atlanta, The Walking Dead, Will Trent, even uh, reality shows like Love is Blind, Love and Hip Hop, Real Housewives of Atlanta, any of Tyler Perry stuff because Tyler Perry Studios are here and he also rents out his studio space to other networks, to any of the superhero TV shows and movies that you've seen, anywhere from Black Panther, Spider-Man, Captain America, The Avengers, and if anybody's seen Avengers Endgame, when the villain Thanos snaps his fingers and people start disappearing, a certain Samuel Jackson, AKA Nick Fury, starts to disappear. And that's towards the end of the movie and he disappears right over here in this area. You can see that FedEx office building in the shot. Right now, so, the only movie that's being filmed around here is Atlanta Cruisers on track. Ha, huh. so watch out for that one. But yeah, so check out be sure to check out uh, Avengers Endgame. You can look up that scene online on YouTube. Also, they filmed a, t a movie called Baby Driver. Oh, I love that movie. So when he's doing a little dance through these streets, going to the coffee shop, that was filmed on these back streets back here. By the way, I did not mean to doubt you about what you said about the movie industry here. I'm just being funny there. No, I, I know. I got that. But uh, on the right-hand side right here is the Adderhall building that is one of Georgia State University's um, classroom buildings and I just want y'all to bookmark that because we're going to go to the main campus in just a little bit and so I'm going to bring that back up. What uh, kind of car is just that? Just bookmark the area. This white building on the right hand side is a flat iron building. That is Atlantis oldest and biggest building. It's trying it hard is, to be New York. Yeah, and his brother resides in New York. Left hand side, we got Woodruff Park. Woodruff Park was built in time for the 96 Olympics. It was built in tribute to Mr. Robert Woodruff, the second owner of Coca Cola. And there is a statue in this park to me, called From the Ashes. So, From the Ashes, during the Civil War, Sherman came through, burnt everything down in Atlanta all the way to Chris, all the way to Savannah, Georgia. And then Atlanta did what? Rise up from the ashes like the mighty phoenix. So the phoenix is symbolic to the city. That is the bird that the woman is holding up on the statue. I am going to point out the statue to it. When we get there, she will be on your left hand side. Get ready for it and you'll see her holding up a phoenix. Coming up right here, left hand side. That is her. Also, we have a transit system called Marta. So, bus bus train line, and coming up on the right hand side is, is Five Points Plaza. That is where our north and southbound, east and westbound lines connect. Right here, we call it Five Points Train Station. And then, right across the street, right there, you see all those shops and stuff right there. It's Underground Atlanta. You got stuff that take you where? underground also an elevator that takes you underground because it's like an underground mall area so when i was talking about the upper street level that included this area as well so before we had the upper street level the merchants had all of their storefronts down below with the train tracks when we got the upper street level they moved all of their stuff top side except for the storefronts the storefronts ended up being abandoned and then in 1968 they deemed this area a historic site following year they turn it into an entertainment retail area which we have come to know and love as underground land. Now you see the Capitol building over there to the right hand side, straight ahead to the right. So that has the Lady of Peace standing on top and that is pure gold on that dome. That gold... Huh? Just two seconds. There we are. And that gold came from Dahlonega, Georgia. That gold... Um, the gold came from Dahlonega, Georgia, and Dahlonega, Georgia is the site of the first real gold rush in the U.S. Did y'all get it? Yes, thank yes, you. Yes, thank you. So, underground, back to Underground Atlanta. Underground Atlanta stayed open until 1980, shut down due to the construction of our subway system, Marta, because they're connected now. Then they reopened in 1989, and that is when they thrived and flourished. 
all the way to the early 2000s, the world of Coca-Cola made its home there for a time, but in the early 2000s, the world of Coca-Cola decided to leave, took a bit of business with it, and Underground Atlanta has not really been the same. They've got a popular concert venue that moved over there. They've been having like some events and activities and shows over there now, but it's still kind of a sketchy area, so I wouldn't really recommend going to Underground Atlanta to me. But we'll see what they do with it, like I said, in four or five years, depending on how well Centennial Yards performs. But now, get hooked in before you can. but now we're about to get over here to Georgia State University, which is my alma mater. I graduated from Georgia State University, and it is primarily known as a business and law school. Now, I want y'all to imagine, because this is one of their main classroom buildings right here, right across the street from us. Um, if you had a class that ended at 1045 in this particular building across the street from us, and then your next class started at 11 uh, a.m. over at the outer hole building that I pointed out earlier. <laughs> yeah, so you would get a lot of cardio done at Georgia State University. Uh, we're going to go to that area where there's a bunch of brick buildings that obviously are being restored. Some of them gutted out. That's in the Gulch area, I think. Nah, if we... Not not at all. We're, we're definitely past the Gulch now. Yeah, well, so, I've got pictures of it earlier. Right here, there used to be a classroom office building where you see this space at right here. They took that down, made this a new courtyard area, so this is where the students like to hang out, skip class, not do their homework. Smoke weed, all that kind of stuff. See it happening right there. Nobody's doing any homework. Just like the rest of the world. Yeah. And now we're about to get over here to Auburn Avenue, which has been nicknamed Sweet Auburn by the unofficial black mayor of the street, Mr. John Wesley Dobbs. He was a he was a political leader as well as a civil rights activist responsible for getting 20,000 black voters registered between the years of 1936 and 1946. This particular street that we're on, that we're about to be on, is a historic black street. And so you're gonna see the first black newspaper, the first black radio station, Madam C.J. Walker's hair salon, the first black insurance company. Some people will say the civil rights movement was born on the street because Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. was born on the street. And we'll get to his, uh, tomb as well as his National Historic Park that's on the street as well. You can see his childhood home. And the reason that there's so much history on this street is because Atlanta was dealing with a lot of racial tension, which led to the race rise of 1906. And the black population was moved to the street. But even though they were moved to the street, ended up thriving and flourishing all the way to the point that they deemed this Black Wall Street. Forbes Magazine deemed this the wealthiest black street in America sometime during the 1950s. You can learn more about that here, maybe at the Apex Museum, African American Panoramic Experience, or perhaps at the Civil Rights Museum. That's back over where we were at earlier. But one of the folks that benefited from this street is Mr. Olazo Herndon. He was a former slave, ended up owning three barbershops. Of those barbershops, he had them lavished out in marble floors and chandeliers. He had white clientele. So unfortunately, due to the times, he had to enter in through the back door with the rest of his black employees. But he took the money that he got from, from there, got into real estate, and then he got into insurance and started the Atlanta Life Insurance Company in 1905 and became Atlanta's first black millionaire. And this is his building right here on the left-hand side. And right here on the right-hand side, we got the Daily World building right across the street. That is the first black newspaper. Here on the left hand side, also, you probably missed it, is a picture of Mr. Alonzo Herndon. Those two pictures down on the bottom. So, if you were wondering what he looked like. Now, I'm going to take y'all over to the Royal Peacock, formerly known as the Top Hat Club. It changed the name to the Royal Peacock sometime during the 1940s. It was a nightclub of black celebrities and performers and entertainers would come out here, hang out here, perform here. Anywhere from Cal Calloway, Louis Armstrong, 
Chuck Berry, Lil Richard, Aretha Franklin, Ella Baker right here in this white building. Royal Peacock is now a reggae night spot. It's not as popular as it used to be, but the street isn't as wealthy as it used to be, as you can obviously tell. It's pretty impoverished. A lot of it is because of the highway that you see all the way straight ahead where you see the um, traffic going up top on the bridge. And also they were desegregated across the border. All of that was kind of taking place around the same time. So a lot of businesses decided to leave and go to other areas elsewhere. So pretty sad, this street has not been the same. Left hand side, we got Big Bethel, longest standing predominantly African American Episcopalian Methodist Church in the area that I know of, and they've done some filming here. Also, if you were to go down here over to the right hand side and dead into that particular building right there, that is the Municipal Market or the Sweet Arbor Market. They have a food court there as well as some uh, shopping vendors there. On the left hand side, we got Oddfellows building. The Oddfellows were six black architects. They designed this building. So this building belongs to them. The part of the way that you know it belongs to them is that they sculpted some of their faces alongside some of the building. You might be able to see one of their faces right there beyond the scaffolding and the black uh, cloth. It's hard to see. If you can't see it, you can't see it, but more of their faces are further up, but you probably can't see it because of the scaffolding and the cloth. So, this is the kind of neighborhood that if they just keep it uh, under minimal maintenance during the bad times, then the speculators would come in, buy it all up, and then gentrify it. And, uh, and then they're, they're turning into uh, brand new buildings again without tearing them down. You know what I mean? Yeah, but Atlanta likes to do a lot of tearing down and building new, so that is a problematic thing. So, yeah, I don't know what they're going to do with this street. But you see the signs underneath the bridge? Those signs are alerting you to the rich, um, historic places and businesses that started on the street. On the left-hand side, you have a mural of Auburn Avenue during its glory days. So this is what Auburn Avenue used to look like when it was popular, when it was bustling. And all of this was put up during the pandemic as a tribute to this historic black street. They still have a festival every year called the Auburn Festival, Sweet Auburn Festival. The street will be shut down and you'll have a bunch of local uh, musicians out here, food vendors, art vendors all throughout the street. Right across the street from us coming up is a statue of Mr. John Wesley Dobbs. <laughs> That's his face. That statue is called Through His Eyes because he was the backbone of the street and his community. He loved the street, so this was built in tribute to him. So it's like he's looking back on his beautiful uh, street. So through his eyes, we'll let this car pass us. That mural back there and that huge piece of graffiti on that brick building about uh, a mile back, that's the sort of thing that got the preserved. Yeah, yeah, yeah. As well as all these brick buildings. Yeah. Alright, coming up on the left hand side, this red brick building right here is the SELC building, so the Christian Leadership Conference. So Dr. King used to work with these folks. So Dr. King held his first office in this particular building right here, left hand side, this red brick building. Alright, as we move along, you got the Prince Hall Masons building on the left hand side, that yellow brick building. But the thing that I want you to see is a circular picture frame coming up if you keep looking down. On the left hand side, you're going to see a circular picture frame. Do you see it? Yeah. That's Miss Madam C.J. Walker's hair salon. Hair salon connected with WRB Weird, the first black radio station. It is a museum now. You can go inside and take a tour. It's $7 admission. And then when you come out of there, you go right here to the Atlanta Breakfast Club, get you some good old chicken and waffles. 10 out of 10 would recommend. Now, did anybody see the movie Black Panther? So towards the end of the movie where the big spaceship comes down and the kids are playing in the parking lot. That was filmed. That was filmed right here on the right hand side. In this parking lot. A lot of people recognize it because of the building behind it. Now we're about to cross over into the Martin Luther King Jr. Uh, National Historic Park. 
On the right hand side, you got Ebenezer Baptist Church. That's the church that Dr. King grew up in, co pastored together with his brother Alfred Daniel. His father and grandfather were seeing ministers on the board. His mother put the board in there until she passed away. And it's now a museum. So you can go inside and you can take a tour. I believe you can also sign up and take a tour of some of the other spots in the park, including his uh, childhood home in Fire Station Number 6. On the left hand side, you got the new Ebenezer Baptist Church where they have regular church. Where y'all have where they have regular church service each and every week. And also if you're here on the right day at the right time, you get to see a Senator Warnock doing a sermon there. But I'm gonna take us over to the King Center. The King Center is the site of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. and his wife Coretta Scott King's tomb. And I'm gonna let y'all out. Y'all gonna walk around for about 10, 15 minutes, and then y'all just meet me at the end of the street. So, Coretta Scott King graduated from Antioch College in 1945, I believe. Yeah? That's uh, where I was originally from. Oh, nice. But yeah, this is the... I'm going to let y'all out. So, basically, you're going to go up those steps like when you see those people doing. You're gonna make a left on the right hand side, you're gonna see a fountain. And then on the left hand side, you're gonna see the eternal flame. Back on the right hand side is the tomb of Dr. King in the Corey Scott Field. And then you're gonna keep walking up straight. You're gonna see a gift shop. You can go inside the gift shop if you want, or uh, if you're not gonna go in the gift shop, you'll make a left at the gift shop. It'll bring you out over by where a fire hydrant is at, at the top of the street. I'll be there at the top of the street waiting for you. So it's 11.33 right now. I say be back at about, be, meet me up there at about 11.50. Yes. 11.50. simple thing of that make it a lot easier to buckle seat belts is I was at the uh, Delta Air Museum yesterday and on the 747 yeah. on uh, first class the female part of the seat belt has a tongue sticking out making it a lot easier to buckle up. I'm surprised that's not a federal fire. <laughs> Them's old fashioned type female end of uh, seat belts. Okay, so I'll um, we'll meet uh, Non-violent, non-cooperation.
be satisfied with anything less as imperfection. Is this where we're supposed to meet? Oh, okay. I'm filming uh, a video. Oh, she's uh, making a video. And you video? Oh, okay. Okay. But um, <laughs> okay. these are the other members of my group here. You Hi. are, uh, what are your names again? Andy from Plymouth, England. Andy from Plymouth. And Diva from Colombia. And what was it? Diva from Colombia. Okay, can you spell that name? D I V A. Okay, Viva from Colombia. No, Viva, no, Diva. <laughs> And uh, yeah, I'm filming this entire video here. You just look up on the Marshall Curtis under YouTube, and uh, maybe look up under uh, Atlanta um, Atlanta electric car video. Uh, okay. And uh, is this where we're supposed to be, Jason? He's just over there. Okay. But we have plenty of time. He said at fifty. So yeah. about eleven fifty. sufficient funds in the great bulks of opportunity of this nation. And so we've come to cash this check, a check that will give us upon demand the riches of freedom and the security of justice. We have also come to this hallowed spot to remind America of the fierce urgency of now. This is no time to engage in the luxury of cooling off or to take the tranquilizing drug of gradualism. Now is the time to make real the promises of democracy. Now is the time to rise from the dark and desolate valley of segregation to the sunlit path of racial justice. Now is the time to lift our nation from the quicksands of racial injustice to the solid rock of brotherhood. Now is the time to make justice a reality for all of God's children. It would be fatal for the nation to overlook the urgency of the moment. This sweltering summit of the Negro's legitimate discontent will not pass until that is an invigorating autumn of freedom and equality. 1963 is not an end, but a beginning. Those who hope that the Negro needed to blow off steam and will now be content, will have a rude awakening if the nation returns to business as usual. There will be neither rest nor tranquility in America until the Negro is granted his citizenship rights. 
The whirlwinds of revolt will continue to shake the foundations of our nation until the bright day of justice emerges. But that is something that I must say to my people who stand on the warm threshold which leads into the palace of justice in the process of gaining our rightful place. We must not be guilty of wrongful deeds. Let us not seek to satisfy our thirst for freedom by drinking from the cup of bitterness and hatred. Is it time to go now? We will go to our struggle on the highway of dignity and dignity. We must not allow our creative protests to degenerate into physical violence. Day and again, we must rise to the majestic heights of meeting physical force with soul force. The marvelous new militancy which has engulfed the Negro community must not lead us to a distrust of all white people. For many of our white brothers as evidenced by their presence here today have come to realize that their destiny is cannot vote, and a Negro in New York believes he has nothing for which to vote. No, no, we are not satisfied, and we will not be satisfied until justice rolls down like waters and righteousness like a mighty stream. not my unmindful that some of you have come here out of great trials and tribulations. Some of you have come fresh from narrow jail cells. Some of you have come from areas where your quest for freedom left you battered by the storms of persecution and staggered by the winds of police brutality. You have been the veterans of creative suffering. Continue to work with the faith that unearned suffering is redemptive. Go back to Mississippi. Go back to Alabama. Go back to South Carolina. Go back to Georgia. Go back to Louisiana. Go back to the slums and ghettos of our northern cities, knowing that somehow this situation can and will be changed. Let us not wallow in the valley of despair. I say to you today, my friend, so even though we face the difficulties of today and tomorrow. I still have a dream. Yes. It is a dream deeply rooted in the American dream. I have a dream that one day this nation will rise up 
live out the true meaning of its creed. We hold these truths to be self-evident that all men are created equal. I have a dream that one day on the red hills of Georgia, the sons of former slaves and the sons of former slave owners will be, be able to sit down together at the table of brotherhood. I have a dream that one day even the state of Mississippi, a state sweltering with the heat of injustice, sweltering with the heat of oppression, will be transformed into an oasis of freedom and justice. I have a dream that my four little children will one day live in a nation where they will not be judged by the color of their skin, but by the content of their character. I have a dream today. King was just getting to the part of his saying, I have a dream. But a schedule is a schedule. Yeah. Thank you for waiting. All right. So everybody enjoyed it? I did. All right. So. Except the other entertainment. Yeah, so that, yeah, that part of it. But so, that's how they go so don't worry. <laughs> on the right hand side, that red brick building across the street from us is fire station number six. That's the first integrated fire station in Atlanta. They brought on 16 black firefighters in 1963. And then they shut down operations in 1991. Then they reopened in 1995 as a museum. And their main focus is talking about the desegregation of the Atlanta Fire Department. Um, they have old equipment that you can look through in there. And a little fun fact is Dr. King played basketball behind the fire station when he was a little kid. So we're gonna continue on and we're still gonna be in the park when we cross this street. Look like he wants to. Brother looks like he wants to act up. But when we cross this street, all the houses that you're gonna see on this particular street belong to the park. So all of them, nothing's been torn down. Whenever they were built, they've been main, maintained the, you know, look the same way. So they've been well, well maintained over the years for the most part. Like the houses that you'll see on the left hand side, which are called shotgun homes. Does anybody know why they're called shotgun homes? It's because if you open up the front door and the back door, it's like a straight shot through. Some people say it's like looking down the barrel of a shotgun. And you might wonder if people are living. Patience, dude. Anyways, yeah. You see where it says private residence? So there are some people that's living in these homes. And either it might be people living in them, some of these homes are being used as office space and some. Some of these uh, spots might not have anybody living in, living in it at all, but there's a lottery system that the park has. So don't know what that looks like, but let's just pretend that you want it. Let's say that spot right there on the left-hand side. You put your name on the list and that spot opens up and then the park contacts you and be like, hey, this spot opened up, your name popped up on the list. Do you still want the spot? You'd be like, yes. So you get to rent it out for dirt cheap and you just have to follow the rules of the park. So, now, y'all see them doing work right there. That is the childhood home of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Oh, which one? The one where you see them taking oh. stuff out. Oh, um, the one straight ahead right there? Yeah. 
It'll be a crying shame to tear that place down. Yeah, they're not tearing so it down. So they're doing that one righteous. I'm here, glad to hear that. Yeah, so on the right hand side is the gift shop that Peach House, and on the left hand side, the blue house is the office space for the park rangers. We have real park rangers. They are in complete regalia, the hats, the outfit, everything. But this is under renovations right now until November 2025. And they basically used to have people that would, people would be able to come through and go all the way up to the porch, take pictures, but you couldn't go inside. The only way you could go inside is if you're on a park rangers tour. The park rangers, they do a walking tour. I'll go around. Are y'all looking at the house? When was the, uh, this house be uh, open to the public? When will it be restored? I, I said uh, November 20, 2025. Oh, okay, I thought you said meant that one with the no, blue no, 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 I meant this one right here. This is under renovations until 2025. Uh, in any case, uh, the only way that you would be able to go inside is if you're on a park lane just walking to it. They would take you on the inside, outside, give you a history of the whole area, and just whatever else is on their tour, they'll give you history and all that. Kind of stuff. So what is the name of this park, sorry? Martin Luther King. It is Martin Luther King. Yeah, Martin Luther, Martin Luther King Jr. National Historic Park. Right. Now you might see that there's plaques outside of some of these houses and stuff. Like that one right there on the left hand side. So that plaque is giving you a little bit of history. I don't have to get a picture of it, but y'all can if y'all want to. It's just giving you a little bit of history of the area. Maybe somebody that lived there. Uh, the significance of the house, the design of the house, any particular thing. So you see these plaques out here, it's just giving you little tidbits of history of, on the area. It may be somebody that might have stayed there. So yeah, that's about it. I'll let y'all get the pictures or y'all let me know y'all got there. This green one in the corner is nice. Got it? Yeah! And that's pretty much it for the National Historic Park. Now coming up on the right hand side, you might see a crazy looking house. That is the Happy House. They build bird houses for people. Oh. You're looking at happy houses. Happy house. Can we go down? Uh, no, no, no. Ay, hold on. Please. Uh, uh, say what? Ay, hold on. business right here on the left hand side called La La Fruta. They have some weird hours but they do like healthy drinks, smoothies and all that kind of stuff right there. So this one to get you a little healthy drink. I don't care how psychedelic they paint them up just as long as they preserve them rather than rip them down. Now I'm about to take you out over to the Beltline. Beltline is a 22 mile loop that connects the different neighborhoods of Atlanta together by using the old railroad routes of Atlanta. So it's basically a paved pathway, a glorified sidewalk. It's where the cool kids like to hang out. So over here, you're gonna see, over here, uh, basically this idea came from a gentleman by the name of Brian Gravel. He was a Georgia Tech grad student. Came up with the idea in 1999. They opened up the Beltline over here in this general area that we're going to in April 2005. So they're slated to connect 45 neighborhoods of Atlanta together using this paved 
pathway, which is a 22 mile loop. And people run on the belt line, walk the belt line, jog, walk their dogs, skate, skateboard, all those particular things all along the belt line. And throughout the belt line is any number of restaurants, little park trails, little pop-up events that are happening, maybe a food truck or something like that, in restaurants and stuff, all along the belt line, little places to hang out and chill. So it's what the cool kids like to do. And if you don't have yourself a bike or something, you can rent out one of these. So like a little bike or a razor scooter. And this is the belt line from left to right, right here. Part of it, you know, so you got more restaurants down that way. You'll eventually get to some more restaurants down that way. And so this particular spot was opened up over here called Croc Street Market. So Croc Street Market is a food hall right here on the left hand side. This is actually a little merchant store, but you get a little further up, this bigger little spot right here is Croc Street Market. And so here at Croc Street Market, it's a food hall. If nobody knows what a food hall is, it's basically a high-end food court. Definitely recommend going to that one. That's one of my favorite ones to go to. There's a lot of good places to eat in there. And even if you don't find something that you want there, there's definitely other places all out here, just in this area. You're bound to find some kind of food or dessert that you like over in this particular area. And also this area is easy access to the belt line, so people like to come over here for that. But now I'm about to take y'all over to Emmett Park. Emmett Park is Atlanta's first planned suburb. So the ideas for this particular neighborhood came from a gentleman by the name of Joel Hurt. He was a real estate developer as well as a businessman. He wanted to create an oasis for yeah. prominent Atlanteans that would also have a trolley that goes from Emmett Park to downtown Atlanta and then back again. And so he created the East Atlanta Land Company so they could buy land in the area and design the area the way that they want it. Right here is Revolution Donuts on the right hand side. Vegan donut shop, all vegan, all the time, all delicious. Right next door to it is Boca Lopo. Italian restaurant that I hear is really good. Now, uh, the houses that you're gonna see are gonna be big and grand in scale, epic looking. Victorian architecture done in the Queen Anne style. People will buy land for $3,000 and then they'll build the homes about 35 feet. But the houses, a lot of houses you're going to see are going to look like this one coming up on the left hand side. Are these the original ones restored or did they mow down the original one and then put up a sweet sugar magnolia? Original uh, Victorian restored, or have they mowed down the original one and then put up a no, new no, one? No, no, it's none of these houses have been torn down. All the deer. It's, uh, everything has been preserved. So this one uh, was constructed in 1892. She's a bed and breakfast now, and sweet, sweet sugar magnolia. Y'all let me know when you got the picture. And this is classic Atlanta. residents here are very protective of their neighborhood and their history. At one point in time they were going to tear down this whole area with the highway, Highway 485, and the residents fought back. I'll give you a little bit more history on that in a little bit. Right there, you see right there in the middle in that median is Historic Indian Park, Atlanta's first suburb, circa 1890. So Joel Hurt came up with this idea in, in the 1880s. 
and then Emin Park came into prominence in 1890. They named it after his best friend Samuel Emin. So that's where we get the name for Emin Park. <laughs> They saw what Robert Moses did to New York City, and he said, no way, I take it. Yeah. But there's a butterfly, and I'll point out that butterfly to you, that was specifically designed to help bring um, solidarity to the residents. Yeah, I saw a lot of the houses love that. So it's a particular design butterfly. When we get to a spot that I can really point it out, I'll point it out to you. This right here on the right hand side is the King George home. This one was constructed in 1890, which makes it one of the original homes constructed in the area. It is also a bed and breakfast and it's ran by Miss Janice Keith. I'll just pull up a little bit so you can get a better picture of it. <laughs> Coming up on the left hand side is going to be the Woodruff House, which is also a bed and breakfast constructed sometime between 1890 and 1892. It's purchased by Mr. Robert Woodruff, second owner of Coca Cola. This is it on the left hand side right here. So, yeah, this uh, particular house right here. Y'all got the picture? Yep. Oh. Now, I mentioned that was a, that there was a trolley, so we're coming up on a trolley barn, which was opened up to the public in 1889. It's no longer used as a trolley barn, it's used as an event space. So this is it on the right hand side, this green little barn right here. So it's used as an event space now, so if you want to have your birthday party here, your wedding, your wedding reception, or just a good old fashioned dance party, you can have it there at the trolley barn. I'm going to be correct in guessing that probably back in the 60s, almost all Atlanta housing was like this, but then since then they probably tore down half of it, and this is the half they preserved. Would that be a fairly good guess? It might be a fairly good guess. There, Atlanta does a lot of tearing down and rebuilding and stuff, so that that's probably a really good guess. But uh, a little bit about what happened with the whole highway fiasco. Sometime between uh, 1910 and 1920, some of the residents decided to move away from the area, go to other suburbs that were starting to pop up. And so they did leave these homes abandoned. And these homes, you know, they would kind of get run down. You had slumlords that would take over and subdivide the houses for cheap. You had um, people that would squat in these homes. And crime made its way over to the area. By the 1960s, the powers that be, which included Mayor Andy Young, the Georgia Department of Transportation, some of the Atlanta City Council decided to pave over the area with a highway. That highway would have been from Highway 485. Residents found out about it, weren't happy about it, so they started a two decade long battle between the residents and the powers that be. And the powers that be had former President Jimmy Carter to sign off on the bill to allow them to pave over this area. This right here is... Smile, you're on YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so right here is Callan Castle. So that, that was... was the girl. Yeah, that was the girl. So this was purchased by Mr. Asa Candler. Asa Candler is the first owner of Coca-Cola because of his merchandising and marketing that Coca-Cola became so popular. They purchased this home for $13,000 at the time. And I can tell you that anything that the Beltline touches or over in the area, the property value skyrockets. So this is probably going for very, very high right now, if it was on the market. For but the residents, they got together with some of the other, um, what you call it, uh, some of the other neighborhoods to fight that because they weren't just paving over this area, it's a lot of our other beloved neighborhoods and stuff as well. And so by the 1970s, they started, the residents here started the Emmett Park Festival. So the Emmett Park Festival was, uh, 
just like any particular festival, but they also did a thing called a tour of homes where you can take a tour on the inside of some of these beautiful homes that you're seeing. And they took the money that they made from that, put it towards their lawyers and legal fees, and the trial continued to go on. Went on into the 1980s, went as high as the Georgia Supreme Court. That's where they made their final decision, made their decision in favor of the residents here. And so we were able to keep this beautiful neighborhood as well as the other neighboring neighborhoods all due to everybody's due diligence. They still have the Emmett Park Festival to this day. We had the Emmett Park Festival late uh, April and they still do the tour of homes. So that's the butterfly that I'm talking about right there. So if you look on yeah. the wings, it looks like there's one face looking one way, one face looking the other way. So it's like one face is looking on in the park doing its uh, beginning stages and the other face is looking towards the future as the neighborhood continues to blossom. Now I'm going to take y'all over to the Inman Park Village District. This is where you're going to get your restaurants and your businesses. And I'm going to give a very brief rating on the ones that I think it's worth your time. And then we're going to take it back because, yeah, it's about that time. I see Georgia is uh, right on red unless it says otherwise mm -hmm. state, like most states are. Yep. Don't quote me on it, but I believe Ohio is one of the states that's the opposite way. No right on red, unless it says otherwise. Mm. All right, coming up on the left hand side is going to be bread and butterfly. I'm going to give them a nine out of ten because I heard all the things about them. I haven't really eaten there yet myself. Coming up on the right hand side. Coming up on the right hand side is Freedy, Neapolitan Thin Cut Style Pizza. That's your bag. They're pretty good. Give them an 8 out of 10. Right next door is an Italian spot called Soto Soto. Give them a 9 out of 10 because I've heard nothing but good things. I don't particularly care for Pure Taqueria. Give them a 4 out of 10. Right here we got Tell Me Crazy. Gonna give them an 8 out of 10. Nice little affordable and healthy wraps. On the left hand side you got Beetle Cat. So seafood spot. There gonna give them about an 8 out of 10 because they've gotten pricey. The lobster roll is about 40, 45 bucks now. Um, right here on the right hand side is Barcelona. So a small place of tapas. Uh, a co-worker of mine gave them a 7 out of 10. So we're gonna go with that right now. So don't know what happened there. Left hand side we got Bar Taco. Gonna give them like a eight out of ten because their menu was a little bit difficult for me to get through the last time that i was here but definitely check out their pork belly taco and their portobello mushroom taco right over in here you cut through here you got easy access to the belt line you also have a little um parking deck area and also folks like to park over in here because there's free parking left hand side got charcoal and barn grill gonna give them a nine out of nine out of ten I've heard really good things about them. My coworker gave them a high rate. Then you got businesses, businesses, businesses. Excuse me. And then right across the street from us on the left hand side is Del Bar, Mediterranean restaurant. Definitely heard nothing but good things about them. Give them a 9.5 out of 10. to hear that Jimmy Carter was on the wrong side of history when it came to uh, Atlanta urban preservation. Well, he's a human. So yeah. He made mistakes. So he did what he thought was right at the time. Right hand side over there. That way you see the belt line so you get an overhead view of it. So I want y'all to pretend that y'all are walking and straight ahead on the belt line. But if you're walking straight ahead on the belt line that way, you'll eventually go, you'll get to a little grassy knoll area where they have a skate park. People like to chill out over there. And if you continue beyond there, you'll get to another little area where they have some more places to eat, including a brewery called New Realm Brewery. And then you go beyond that, you'll get to Pot City Market. 
Pine City Market was designed by the same gentleman that did the Chelsea Market in New York. It is a food hall, indoor, outdoor, retail area. <laughs> yeah, indoor, outdoor, retail area. And then if you go beyond Pine City Market, if you go beyond Pine City Market, you'll get to our second largest park, which is Piedmont Park. Next door to Piedmont Park is the Botanical Gardens. I definitely recommend going to the Botanical Gardens if it's a sunny, gorgeous day. <laughs> you can still go to the Botanical Gardens today. I just like to go there when it's sunny. Perfect. Right here on the right hand side got bomb biscuits atlanta i'm going to give them a nine out of ten as well they have a michelin star which lets you know that they mean business and their biscuits are delicious and they do chicken now biscuits i highly recommend if you're leaving here or whatever like for a morning breakfast get one of their chicken biscuits but don't get a side because their chicken biscuits are really big so, because they give you a whole chicken thigh. It's like a little small sandwich. So. Right underneath us is Freedom Parkway. Freedom Parkway will lead you to the Carter Center, former President Jimmy Carter's museum and library, if that's something that you might be interested in. to mention about Pond City Market is uh, I already mentioned that it's an indoor outdoor retail area but they have a rooftop that people like to go to it costs $15 to go up to their rooftop they have a bunch of fun and games and drinks and snacks up there that you have to pay for in addition to the $15 to go up to the rooftop but down the street from Pond City Market is the Claremont Hotel they have a rooftop that people like to go to where you get a beautiful view of the city that also has a bar and a few snacks up there, but you don't have to pay any money to go up to their rooftop. So you could go there, go to their rooftop, pay for the drinks and snacks and everything. And you might even be up there and they might have a little band that's performing up there. A little band that's playing to get a little bit of ambiance. So definitely check them out. Also, you can check out the Woodruff Art Center, which is between 14th and 16th Street. At the Woodruff Art Center, you have the Alliance Theater, the Atlanta Symphony, and the Atlanta High Museum of Art. So if you only check out one of those spots, definitely check out the Atlanta High Museum of Art. Also, if you're a history buff, just want some history and stuff you can go to the Atlanta History Center and they kind of they're kind of interactive there so they do kind of like little reenactments and all that kind of stuff so y'all can definitely check them out and get some history there but right now we're at the Jackson Street Bridge so Jackson Street Bridge was Atlanta's best kept secret for a date night but then The Walking Dead filmed some scenes for their first season here and also used this uh, particular area for some promotional material. And so this is now a popular spot to film, do headshot photography, wedding photography, music videos, TikToks, all that kind of stuff. And this is it's because of that little skyline view right there to the left hand side. Looks better when it's not cloudy or we have an overcast. So. It's also real easy to junk yourself off this bridge. Yeah. I haven't had too many complaints about that, so that's 
is often they build a sky high fence that bends inward to the road on something like this to prevent that. Yeah. Definitely haven't really had that because I'm sure they wouldn't build that with something like that. Well, the powers that be generally always respond on a as happens. needed basis. Yeah. So Right there on the left hand, to the left, you see that big tall building with the T on top of it? The truest building? Anybody yes, no, yay, nay? Yeah. And then if you go to the right, a little bit beyond the trees or the bush over there, is a, another tall building with a spike on top. Do you see it? Yeah. That's the Bank of America building. Which one of those buildings do you think is the tallest? Bank of America. All right, we got one for Bank of America. Anybody else? Nobody else guessing? No, nobody else is guessing. <laughs> All right, you're right. It is the Bank of America, brother. Bank of America is the tallest. So, they used to be a computer programmer for a long time ago in England. <laughs> oh, okay. But they were doing construction around the same time. And once Bank of America um, finished, Truist was still building. And then once the Truist finished, Bank of America, they went to put that top hat on just so they could say that they're <laughs> Just to make sure it was the tallest. That's yeah. it. That uh, The top of it is not used for anything. I used so, to have, be with Bank of America until they started charging uh, 12 bucks a month for uh, uh, fees for my checking account back in 2012. So oh, I switched. Wow. Yeah. A friend of mine would refer to them as loan sharks of America. <laughs> it's one of those too big to fail banks. Yeah, they are. They might be the biggest, at least that I know of. They're based in Charlotte. Mm. So, yeah, you're not the first person I've heard that's turned away from Bank of America. Well, some other spots that you might want to check out. We do have a zoo here, so you can check out Zoo Atlanta. Don't know if we still have a pandas here. The pandas are supposed to be going back to China. Also, um, we have the Fern Bank Science Dinosaur Museum. Always check them out. Also, we have, uh, what did you call it? Uh, did I forget the name? Well, we do have the Fabulous Fox Theater, so you can always go check them out if you're trying to uh, see a show. They're located downtown. I'm not sure what show they're playing right now. They were playing a musical six about Keith Louie or something like that, his six wives. Uh, oh, the Atlanta Center for Puppetry Arts, which is also located downtown, but kind of more midtown. Um, between 16th and 18th Streets. Now so, that the Atlanta Center of Puppetry Arts, they have the Jim Henson Museum in there. They do shows there. They also do a tour there. You can also build your own puppet or muppet, whichever one you like. Uh, that, that area of old houses in there, uh, there's a name of a neighborhood in that Inman uh, Park Reynolds area. I can't remember what the name of it is. Yeah. Um, you, you know which uh, name I'm thinking about? Cabbage Town? No. I think it starts with F. That's no big deal, but I just wondered if that was the area we went around in. Because we were kind of in the Ponzi Highlands area. Little Five Points? No, no, it's uh, definitely Which we were also uh, very close east to. East of well. Five Points. It's uh, north it? of the blue and green line, but uh, east of the. Uh, Of the red and gold line. So you're talking Marty now, and I. 
I, I'm just tell. trying to. Yeah, I'm, I'm not entirely sure. Well, I was under the impression that was an area that had old Atlanta houses. Old Atlanta houses. It's like there's a lot of old Atlanta houses in different areas. It's, it depends, but I don't know unless I'm just blanking right now of, of one of the neighborhoods that start with F. Yeah. Are we going to be uh, coming up on the Margaret Mitchell house? Uh, no. I'm, I'm taking us back. Okay. Well, I saw that already anyway, but this whole area probably used to be just like that uh, in the first half of the 20th century. Yeah, I'm sure. You just think with the trolley stuff going through here. But, um,. Also, y'all can check out the new Braves Stadium, which is the battery. The Braves are playing right now, and the battery is its own little ecosystem. What is that white monument there? The Carnegie, not in Tyler Show, not well first on that one. But um, yeah, you can check out the new Braves Stadium. This is its own little ecosystem. They have a concert venue out there called the Coca-Cola Roxy. Also, they have a number of restaurants and shops that you can go to out there. And bars that have funny games. So, so you have a lot of stuff to do out there in addition to going to a race game. I know y'all in the back went to the Georgia Aquarium, but this particular area, we call it Pemberton Place. On the right hand side. And in it is the little trifecta of the Georgia Aquarium, the world of Coca-Cola that's also right over there, and also the Civil Rights Museum. So y'all can take a tour on any at any of those particular spots. Pemberton Place, as in uh, the Civil War General, uh, Confederate General no, of Pemberton? Uh, no, uh, I don't think he did any of that, but the Pemberton that I'm thinking of is Dr. Pemberton. He okay. came up with the formula for Coca-Cola. So they oh, named, really? So they named this spot after him because you got the world of Coca-Cola sitting on it and all that kind of stuff, so Dr. Pemberton. But... If you do go, I know y'all went to the Georgia Aquarium. I don't know if y'all saw the Sea Lion Show or the... Yeah, it was so late. It was late yeah. So y'all, but y'all saw it? Yeah. And did y'all do the Dolphin Show too? Yes. yes. Nice. Twice. <laughs> nice. And they were different. They were two different times. Really? Yeah. That's even better. Now what is that big thing sticking up on the right there? For the for the Centennial Park, there's a lot of different little pieces of art throughout Centennial Olympic Park. But like I told you, I don't really got it. I don't, I don't know a it's whole cool. lot of what goes on. <laughs> yeah, I ain't got all over in the belt line with everybody else. So, so what's the easiest way if we wanted to go to the belt line to get to it from here? So you have to say what particular spot on the belt line that you want to go to because right. like I said, it's a 22 mile loop. But if yeah, I realize get... that. So what would be, for me, would be the nearest part if you just wanted to go and walk somewhere so, that was close by. So if you like the... We don't have a car, you see. So. Yeah, so you would Uber. Yeah. You would Uber or take a left, just tell them uh, Frog Street Market. They'll take you over to Frog Street Market and you have easy access to the belt line. Right. Or you say even park over where the restaurants are at. Right. And then you also have easy access to the belt line okay. for those two particular areas that I took y'all to. Yeah. Yeah. So, and then you just get your easy access to the belt line and walk the belt line. Okay. But this is it. Y'all have any other questions or anything? When I go on this tour, this is where you stop. <laughs> other than that, I do, I do, 
I do take tips if you feel so inclined. Yeah, Otherwise, tell your friends and family about us. Yeah. So, show you so that you take this out. Yeah, good mall or cash out. You mind, you mind you YouTube being on my YouTube video? Sorry? You mind you being on YouTube my YouTube video? No, no, it's fine. Okay. You thank you. Okay. Thank you very much. Okay. Thank you very much, Viva and Andy. Andy. And thank you very much there. Jason. Jason. And I'll give you your tip as soon as that's all folks. Atlanta Cruisers Electric Car Tour. June 5th, 2024. 11 o'clock show.